actually was actually. What was going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realize the Secret Service guards uh, foreign embassies. Uh, not usually, no sir. No, no. Do they give you any trouble, Saudis? Uh, no comment on that. Uh -huh. Sorry, yes, sir. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I'll take that as a yes. All right, good. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks for the work. You did. It turns out that Saudi Prince Bandar is perhaps the best protected ambassador in the U.S. The U.S. State Department provides him with a six-man security detail. Considering how he and his family and the Saudi elite own 7% of America, it's probably not a bad idea. Prince Bandar was so close to the Bushes, they considered him a member of the family, and they even had a nickname for him, Bandar Bush. Two nights after September 11th, George Bush invited Bandar Bush over to the White House for a private dinner and a talk. Even though bin Laden was a Saudi, and Saudi money had funded Al-Qaeda, and 15 of the 19 hijackers were Saudis, here was the Saudi ambassador casually dining with the president on September 13th. What were they talking about? Were they commiserating or comparing notes? Why would Bandar's government block American investigators from talking to the relatives of the 15 hijackers. Why would Saudi Arabia become reluctant to freeze the hijackers' assets? The two of them walked out on the Truman balcony so that Bandar could smoke a cigar and have a drink. In the distance, across the Potomac, was the Pentagon, partially in ruins. I wonder if Mr. Bush told Prince Bandar not to worry because he already had a plan in motion. You come in September 12th, ready to plot what response we take to Al-Qaeda. Let me talk to the, about the response that you got from top administration officials. On that day, what did the president say to you? The president, in a very intimidating way, left us, me and my staff, with the, the clear indication that he wanted us to come back with the word that there was an Iraqi hand behind 9-11 because they had been planning to do something about Iraq from before the time they came into office. Did he ask about any other nations no. other than Iraq? No, no, no. No, not at all. It was Iraq, Saddam, find out, get back to me. And were his questions more about Iraq than about Al-Qaeda? Absolutely. Absolutely. He didn't ask me about Al-Qaeda. And the reaction you got that day from the Defense Secretary, Donald Rumsfeld, from his assistant, Paul Wolfowitz? Well, Donald Rumsfeld said, uh, when we talked about bombing the Al-Qaeda infrastructure in Afghanistan, he said there were no good targets in Afghanistan. Let's bomb Iraq. And we said, but Iraq had nothing to do with this. And that didn't seem to make much difference. And the reason they had to do Afghanistan first was it was obvious that Al-Qaeda had attacked us. And it was obvious that Al-Qaeda was in Afghanistan. The American people wouldn't have stood by if we had done nothing on Afghanistan. The United States began bombing Afghanistan just four weeks after 9-11. Mr. Bush said he was doing so because the Taliban government of Afghanistan have been harboring bin Laden. We will smoke him out of their holes. We're gonna smoke him out. Smoke him out and smoke him out of his cave. Let's rush him and smoke him out. For all his tough talk, Bush really didn't do much. But what they did was slow and small. They put only 11,000 troops into Afghanistan. There are more police here in Manhattan, more police here in Manhattan than there are US troops in Afghanistan. Basically, the president botched the response to 9-11. He should have gone right after bin Laden. The U.S. special forces didn't get into the area where bin Laden was for two months. Two months? A mass murderer who attacked the United States was given a two-month head start? Who in their right mind would do that? Hey. Anybody say nice shot? Nice shot. Hell of a shot. Or was the war in Afghanistan really about something else? Perhaps the answer was in Houston, Texas. In 1997, while George W. Bush was governor of Texas, a delegation of Taliban leaders from Afghanistan flew to Houston to meet with UNICAL executives to discuss the building of a pipeline through Afghanistan, bringing natural gas from the Caspian Sea. And who got a Caspian Sea drilling contract the same day UNICAL signed the pipeline deal? A company headed by a man named Dick Cheney. Halliburton. From the point of view of the U.S. government, this was kind of a magic pipeline um, because it could serve so many purposes. 
And who else stood to benefit from the pipeline? Bush's number one campaign contributor, Kenneth Lay, and the good people of Enron. Only the British press covered this trip. Then in 2001, just five and a half months before 9-11, the Bush administration welcomed a special Taliban envoy to tour the United States to help improve the image of the Taliban government. You have imprisoned the women. It's a horror, let me tell you. And I'm really sorry to your husband. He met have a very difficult time with you. Here is the Taliban official visiting our State Department to meet with U.S. officials. Why on earth would the Bush administration allow a Taliban leader to visit the United States knowing that the Taliban were harboring the man who bombed the USS Cole and our African embassies? Well, I guess 9-11 put a stop to that. When the invasion of Afghanistan was complete, we installed its new president, Hamid Karzai. Who was Hamid Karzai? He was a former advisor to UNICAL. Bush also appointed as our envoy to Afghanistan, Zalmay Khalizad, who was also a former UNICAL advisor. I guess you can probably see where this is leading. Faster than you can say black gold, Texas tea, Afghanistan signed an agreement with her neighboring countries to build a pipeline through Afghanistan carrying natural gas from the Caspian Sea. Oh, and the Taliban? Well, they mostly got away as did Osama bin Laden and most of Al-Qaeda. Terror is bigger than one person. And uh, he, he's just, he's, 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 a, he's a person who's now been marginalized. So I, I don't know where he is. Nor, you know, I, I just don't spend that much time on him, Kelly, to be honest with you. Didn't spend much time on him? What kind of president was he? I'm a war president. I make decisions here in the Oval Office uh, in foreign policy matters with war on my mind. With the war in Afghanistan over and bin Laden forgotten, the war president had a new target. The American people. We've got an unusual terror warning from the feds to tell you about. Fox News has obtained an FBI bulletin that warns terrorists could use pen guns, just like in James Bond, filled with poison as weapons. Good evening, everyone. America is on high alert tonight, just four days before Christmas. A possible terror threat as bad as or worse than 9-11. But where? How? There's nothing specific to report. Be on the lookout for model airplanes packed with explosives. And the FBI is warning ferries may be considered particularly at risk for hijacking. Could these cattle be a target for terrorists? Fear works. Fear does work. Yes. You can make people do anything if they're afraid. And how do you make them afraid? Well, you make them afraid by creating an aura of endless threat. They played us like an organ. They raised the, the orange and then up to red, and then they dropped it back to orange. I mean, they, they gave these mixed messages which were crazy-making. The world has changed after September the 11th. It's changed because we're no longer safe. Fly and enjoy America's great uh, destination spots. We've entered what may very well prove to be the most dangerous security environment the world's known. Take your families and enjoy life. Terrorists are doing everything they can to gain even deadlier means of striking us. Get down to Disney World in Florida. It's like a, training a dog. You tell them, sit down, and you tell them to roll over at the same time. Dog doesn't know what to do. Well, the American people are being treated like that. It was really very, very skillfully and, and, and ugly in, in what they did. We must stop the terror. I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. All right. They will continue, in my view, uh, as long as this administration is in charge, of every once in a while stimulating everybody to be afraid. Just in case you forgot. It's not going to go down to green or blue. It's never going to get there. There clearly is no way that anyone can live constantly on edge like that. The harsh reality facing American families today is that they're not as safe as they used to be. Drug dealers and users looking for their next fix, gangs who roam the streets in search of their next victim, and the growing threat of terrorists means the need for protection is ever greater. And now, that protection is here. 
Zytec Engineering LLC has developed and tested a safe